May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung and may you stay. Forever young. Forever young. Forever young. May you stay forever young. May you grow up to be righteous. May you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous. Stand upright and be strong and may you stay forever young. feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of change shift. May your heart always be joyful. May your song always be sung. May you stay forever young. When the world changed and went into lockdown, my place of solace was at the top of a hill in the country, a long way from the road trips and gigs and more road trips and more gigs. It didn't take long before I was missing it all. No one could go more than two kilometers from their home, so with only mountains as an audience, I started to do what I do, uh, play music. At first, it felt like singing into a void, but it made everything feel a little more normal, whatever that is, was, or will be. These concerts were my postcards from the edge, my way of expressing myself and singing the body electric. And it turned out that while I was out in the wilderness, I wasn't the only one feeling this way. People would respond with their messages, requesting songs, saying hello to loved ones in a foreign land, sharing stories of joy and sadness, it's this experience and these postcards from the edge that have inspired this new program. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm ready to get out, to meet people again, to chat, and find out how they got on and what got them through. That's what this show is all about. 
meeting real people and sharing their stories. And of course, there will be lots of music and crack along the way. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you've been having a great week. Tonight's show is all about youth on hold. So if you have things you wish to share on the sh subject, let us know. We are live right now, so keep hitting the, the like buttons and the heart buttons and all the buttons so other people can see that you're watching and let's spread the numbers out there. Uh, so we're live right now, so you don't need to wait and do that. Do it now. If you can, send on your messages. Let's have a look at what's coming up on the show tonight. Uh, there was other opportunities that came up, you know, during COVID as well, but I mean, um, that, that, that was pretty much 2019. I would have said it was one of my favourite, most exciting years, you know, actually. But um, yeah, it, it, it'll exist as a great memory now and hopefully afterwards. Straight, believe in yourself, you can. 
all of the two weeks and I would recommend it to everybody. If you play an instrument and you'd like to join a band it's brilliant and it's just such a fun great experience. Summer. like a good experience and like you can try different instruments out and there's loads of different workshops. You meet like really good people here with like same interests and you just get to play music. We were practicing writing our own songs, we were practicing coming up with melodies and chords so I thought that was really helpful for writing music. It's really fun here and it's nice having all the other musicians around so you can like see what they're thinking and then learn the new things that you haven't thought of or known before. I think that's the good thing about this, everyone's open to your own ideas and it doesn't really matter what style of music you're into here. Summer, summer, can't wait for summer. Summer, summer, I wish it... You have a lot of just essentially creative roundtables where everyone gets to throw their hat into the ring and say what they want to do or how they feel about certain aspects of a song or a performance. This is kind of like the only music school around Port Leash. They ask you what you want to do and then you lead the way. The best thing will probably get into be performing and how to play with other musicians and I learned a lot of music theory at the same time. I learned how to do different cool stuff on the drums. There's instruments that I tried out this week that I'd never played before and now I've got kind of a new liking for them. So it's kind of just opened a lot of doors that, you know, I probably wouldn't have tried if I didn't go to the camp. I learned different chords on the ukulele and me and my friends made up a song and that was probably my favourite bit. It's an amazing experience and you get to learn new instruments and make loads of new friends and it's really, really fun. Well, you've just seen a video about Music Generation Leash, so now please welcome Rosa Flannery from the organisation to tell us more about what they do. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good, Jack. How Thanks are you? Thanks for helping us put this all together and finding some great musicians for us to play with. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, can you tell us a bit more about Music Generation? How did it all begin and who was involved? Yeah, um, Music Generation is Ireland's national music education initiative funded by the Department of Education and also you too and a charity called the Ireland Funds. Um, it was set up in 2011 and it came to leash in 2012. So we're, we're going to be 10 years old next year. Um, so it's, it's great because we're now, uh, now funded by the Department of Education, which means we're government funded. So we're here to stay, whereas at the beginning it was all very experimental and we were just hoping that things would work out and things would go well. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. The idea really is to give every child the opportunity to get involved in music, no matter what their background is, no matter where they're located in, in the country or what, they, what, what their financial background is. So that's really, it's just about giving the opportunity and hopefully some providing the sports that hopefully some of the young people would then continue in music as well. So that's mm. really what we're about. And it's, it's fantastic. I mean, these things didn't really exist before, so it's, it's, a, it's a great progress, I think. And um, can you describe some of the projects that you did during COVID involving the young people? How did you get through? 
Yeah, God, sure. I remember it well, like everybody, you know, we got the word that we had to lock, should go mm. into lockdown. Um, and really the first thing we did was we just, we started trialing platforms like Zoom to see how we could continue to teach music online. And um, we did that all pretty quickly. So we were very lucky and we got classes up and running. Um, and then once we had those, our, our regular classes up and running, we started to get a bit more creative about what we, what we could do on, in, in the online sphere. Uh, one of the things I suppose that was really successful was um, we have a trad orchestra and you've heard lots of our traditional mm, musicians as, as part of the series. So um, we actually, we had about 30 members when we went into lockdown and then we opened that up nationally to young people from all over Ireland. And we got them involved in a composition project with the accordionist Martin Tourish and like over 70 people joined in from all over the country and started to develop a piece of music online using Zoom. So it was really experimental, but like a great way to kind of connect up and keep a connection going. We were finally able to premiere two suites of the new piece of music um, a couple of weeks ago in, in Port Leash. So um, it's, that's, that's been amazing. Uh, other things too, I mean, there was just, we did online open mics and things like that. Um, and then there was just really simple things like even, um, you know, um, we've heard Siobhan Buckley play the harp with you as well amazing, as part of tonight's amazing. show. And um, the before COVID, all our young harpers, we've over a hundred young harpers spread across Leash. A lot of them take their class in their local primary school and they use the harps that were in the school. But because of COVID, we got instruments out to everybody. And I suppose even having a harp at home and that increased the confidence yes. of the young people. And um, so suddenly some of them were really just flying it on their instruments because they had time at home to practice and develop mm. and they had their own instrument there. So yeah, there was a lot of little eureka moments, I suppose, along the way where we went, gosh, this is something we can now start to do differently. Um, and another, another really mad thing that happened actually was Leash is twinned with Franklin and Tennessee um, near Nashville. And we started connecting up with young people from a high school in Franklin on Zoom, performing for each other. They had a great music program in this high school. And um, I mean, obviously we want to come together and we want to go to America and they want to come to Leash. And, but it's just that the groundwork's already done. The connections are already there because the young people have already met each other. Mm. Whereas if that had been pre-COVID, we'd have probably been awkwardly gone over to Franklin and meeting people for the first time and starting to develop those friendships that are already now in place. So yeah. it's amazing really, you know, what technology yeah. has offered. I mean, for all it was a bad time for music in respect to people couldn't play live, but it actually had other things that occurred where people were, were playing at home and practicing more and learning more. I think it kind of, it, it was positive in that respect. C can you see the impact, uh, uh, introduce music to kids, uh, how it impacts them, can you? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's a way to really improve your confidence. Mm. Um, it's a way to, particularly if you, I mean, we offer music in a lot of primary schools and secondary schools and different projects across Leash Guard, the Youth Diversion Project. So all kind of, all kinds of contexts. I think when, when they, then we have our own building in Port Leash, now Leash Music Centre. When we see young people come in the doors there, maybe to join a band or an orchestra, they're meeting like-minded people. And that's, that's a real kind of a, I suppose it's, it's a real confidence booster for them to meet other people, get to play music with them. And um, yeah, that social part is really important. I think of course we've missed out on some of that during COVID as well with even not having the performance opportunities, the live performance opportunities. But now that that's started to come back, it's like, whoa, God, it's just really special now, everything mm -hmm. that we've experienced. We've had um, like one of our bands actually, Paper Planes supported Hudson Taylor on the grounds of Leash Music Centre recently. And sure, the crowd were going wild, you know? So yeah. it's, yeah, so um, it's, it's definitely, it's such a confidence booster and a great way to meet people. It's lots of fun. And um, I think even if you don't go on to play, to uh, to be a professional musician, to have had the opportunity mm. and to have that understanding of music, 
it also develops audiences for the future as well for yourself and yes. other musicians you know and it's just a fantastic way for 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 them to express themselves in a, in a new kind of way as well, you know, in a very old way, you know, it's, it's music is just such a, a magical thing. Is there a lasting impact on youth as a result of uh, the shuttering and reduction of all the services through COVID? Is, is it going to impact you guys? Yeah, well, I mean, I think everybody's experience has been quite different, you know, so um, and unfortunately, if uh, like young people with special needs or young people who came from a challenge in home environment, you know, I think the effects have, you know, that it's been a very, very tricky time for those young people. Um, and uh, but I think the young uh, that that the, for young people now they've they've had this kind of big experience and they're kind of coming back and fresh, ready to go. They're so appreciative of. Mm of the opportunities that are, that are available. So we're very, very hopeful that the, the resilience is there and it's going to carry them yeah. through into adulthood, you know. Yeah, I think I think it will. I think, you know, we're going to come back stronger after all this. And like post COVID, what's the hope for music generation for the future? Well, we want really want music generation nationally to be like like the GAA, a household name, something that Perfect. everybody does and has access to. And I really feel like we're getting there. Um, we're now in um, every part of Ireland. So, um, so some of the newer ones that music generation programs are just getting established. So that's that's really exciting for us in music generation Leash specifically. Would you believe we were supposed to be going to Japan in April 2020? So we are um, hoping to make some of those dreams a reality now going forward and some of the things that were postponed i'm sure like yourself and so um that's exciting and we just want to keep getting bigger and and better and also i think really to to connect up with what it is that young people want so that we we're listening to young people's voices and what we do and as you say it's the creativity being guided by them it's not us telling young people what to do mm. we want them to tell us and we just guide them along the way do you know yeah. when they need their, our support so yeah i mean it's massive i think for kids to be able to you know another kind of escapism outside of all the technology it's a very natural thing to music and it's just so good for your brain mm -hmm. your heart your head everything you know so long may it last thanks a million rosa thank you so much uh, to learn more please check out www.musicgeneration.ie thank you so much um, as you know, we've been spotlighting various up-and-coming musicians and this week it's the turn of Gavin McDermott, a.k.a. The Shoda, and Jay Curran, who is also Niall Horn's musical director. So this is their postcard from the edge. Six feet and a bit of face. High hopes and energy. Well, The Shoda was a... I used to make music just under my own name. I never released any of it, and it was more just like acoustic guitar, kind of a singer-songwriter style. I suppose I still am a singer-songwriter, but I was always really interested in electronic music, or I became more interested in it. Giving it a name meant I could always leave the door open if I wanted to work with other friends or people, and like, over the, like Jake and I first met, I think around 2015, we were in a musical together, and I was the, um, I think I played bass on it, and you were the, the ND slash guitarist. And um, yeah, we just, I remember our first song we tried to write was in an airport in Canada. Yeah, it was actually. It was yeah. shortly after we met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just ended up playing in this pit band together. And then a few months later, we were in San Diego doing, bringing that, that particular musical went to a fringe festival over in San Diego. So we solidified the friendship there. Yeah. For yeah. there for two weeks. It was yeah, great yeah. crack. And then during the pandemic, obviously Jake, unfortunately, you know, missed out on you know touring and that but I suppose the, the flip side was we were around and we were in a support bubble so we were able to you know commit we had more time to work together and like since I suppose the beginning of this year we, we kind of dedicated a good bit more time to try and do that and that's how we got the studio on Avenue Road so yeah it's been like a very natural development of our friendship and I think we just we're we know each other well enough now and are comfortable to kind of try, try any ideas we're not trying to impress each other or anybody it's just it's just good crack and um, you know it, it just it just brings us on an interesting journey you know I was in in March yeah in March last year 2020 I was in the States and was about to start a nine-month 
tour with Niall Horan. And obviously we were all, everyone involved was pretty bummed out at the start. But I think over time it kind of, you know, it was sort of happy in a way for the change of pace. Not happy for it, but the change of pace was nice. Mm -hmm. And we got to write a lot more, got to write mm -hmm. with other people a lot more, got to just think of things within the kind of musical world that I had, wouldn't have thought if I was out touring, playing sort of the same gig every night. And all of that is great, you know, um, and I'm itching to get back doing that. But um, yeah, so it was it was a big change of pace, really. Um, well, for me, I think 2019, I'd released a single in like May of that year and then one in September. And we did some music videos and I was working quite, quite closely with my manager is May and you know this was this was great it was like you know putting something out there your first two singles and I, I was really surprised by you know how well they received it wasn't like you know taking the world by storm or anything but just on a personal level it was brilliant and you know that, that people would playlist your songs and listen to them and it would become part of their lives and that really meant the world to me and managed to get booked for EP as well you know at the, the end of the summer so I was like great this is a, a wonderful foundation to build on and I think the last gig I actually did uh, as the show that Jake, Jake was home from touring, so that was in the Bellow Bar in the November. And I think that, that was the last gig I played to this day. But um, yeah, that, that's really where I was at. And um, I, I was just really excited to kind of get more songs done and get, you know, develop the live set and, you know, look at 2020, try and do more festivals. Uh, obviously that didn't happen. Uh, there was other opportunities that came up, you know, during COVID as well, but I mean, um, that, that, that was pretty much 2019. I would have said it was one of my favourite, most exciting years, you know, actually. But, um, yeah, it, it, it'll exist as a great memory now, and hopefully afterwards, um, you know, we can go on a different adventure. Did, I think the community has suffered by not being around and not, mm. and not having mm. the sort of random factor of who will you bump into when you go to this gig and who do, you, who do you see on the street going to their gig while you're going to your gig. Like, it's really missed out on that. Because, I don't know, I found I gravitated towards people, obviously it was collaborating with sort of random, different new people, but like it was generally my friends that I yeah. kept close to. And as, as the months went on, I kind of did miss the wild card, you know, the, the random person who you bump into here and there. So. But I think the most enjoyable thing was probably all the writing, you know, like yeah. we started dipping our toe into it last summer and then once January of this year came, we we kind of got more serious, or maybe a bit later than January, but we sort of, maybe maybe March, we really kind of got, got yeah. serious about it. And we wouldn't have done that if, if I was away. You would have been doing it obviously by yourself or with other people, but we wouldn't have done yeah. it together. What I love about working with Jake is he's, he's much more of a player and a musician than I am in a way. And I kind of look at it as kind of like a painting or like a scene in the movie or something. I know that sounds very, you know, grandiose or whatever. Hopefully it doesn't, but I, I'll try, I'll, have tended to come up with those kind of like soundscapey parts while we're working together but what's what I love about working with Jake is he's really good at like making sure the harmony complements each other and that the part, nothing is getting you know what the song should really be about is it, its elements uh, whereas I know when I write on my own I can get stuck and go off on tangents and um, it doesn't feel like it has the the depth in terms of the parts and vice versa as well yeah Personally, I feel excited because I just really want to get back in and I can't wait to try and put a set together and I really want to play the tunes, the body of work me and Jake are working on. Yeah, I would say overall feel, feeling positive, you know, and um, really looking forward to it and gigging it whenever that is. Hallelujah. Oh. 
Is a God above, but all I've ever learned from love was how to shoot somebody who outdrew you. No, it's not a cry. Not someone who's seen the light, it's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, some, I'm just giving some, uh, some great comments here about Music Generation, talented, talented kids there, Anne-Marie McGregor, thanks Anne-Marie for all your support, that is fantastic, amazing kids, amazing what's going on, Mira Noonan, fantastic kids, Mary Cullen, huge thanks to Music Generation, to giving my own children so much confidence to play the ukulele, brilliant tutors in the schools too, they're now even playing some of Jack's songs, Ronan Douglas, thanks for that Ronan. Uh, Jack looking very relaxed tonight, getting used to being an interviewer. I think it's a sign he needs to do more. Geraldine McGrath. Oh, thank you so much, Geraldine. Gorgeous version of Georgia by Amory McGregor. I think our youth put on hold was one of the saddest parts of lockdown. They lost almost two years of their lives. It really takes its toll mentally. 
Here's hoping the youth recover and have a fantastic future. I heard Geraldine McGrath as well. I'm, I'm absolutely sure they will. We will all bounce back much stronger from this. Now, last week, uh, we spoke to Philippa Ryder of Under the Rainbow. She asked me to mention that her memoir called My Name is Philippa is on sale the 21st of October from Mercer Press. And it deals with her transition from male to female, the difficulties and the joys, plus all the amazing support she got from her wife and daughter. So we wish you every success with that, Philippa, and you were brilliant last week. And we'll talk about maps again. Uh, <clears throat> now here's another message that was emailed uh, from Ellie. Hi, Jack. Firstly, and ironically, my job as a nurse was put on hold as I was running a non-emergency clinic, which had a high turnover, so it wasn't safe to keep it going in the circumstances. And a job I had as, and another job I had as a living care changed and ultimately stopped because of COVID. So I had to move house, then move again, because the person I was minding was suffering from dementia, and I didn't want uh, didn't want me there. So. Uh, then my husband and I have been living apart and it was clear by the time lockdown hit that the only way forward was divorce. Sorry to hear that. In the middle of it all, this I got a pinched nerve, then pulled my back, then fell down the stairs and sprained my ankle. My God. So when I haven't been moving house, I've been pretty much so on bed rest for most of the lockdown. You kept a lot of people going through COVID and congratulations on postcards from the edge. It's a great series and a wonderful way to process and deal with the last 18 months. Much love and respect. Thanks, Ellie. Thank you so much for that message, and I hope you're doing okay. Um, it's been great getting to read and hear your stories. Uh, but now, uh, let's take a look at what's coming up later in the show. I had a gig kind of ready to go to Tunisia, um, Paris, Amsterdam. Um, a couple of Belgian gigs and also then I had some contacts that wanted me to play in, in, in Dubai as well and in Saudi and it just all kind of just went bam, gone. Let me hear you clapping out there ladies and gentlemen for Mr. Derry Cronin on the piano, of course, of course. Siobhan Buckley on the harp, Roisin Donahue on the violin. Is there something in the sky? Something up there that they hide? A jewel for me and you Apple trees with fallen fruit That its beauty's beyond words It's like a tune that I can't sing I've heard it sung by birds It's a rooftop lullaby Falling from the sky Sends us to sleep tonight It's the apple in your eyes Keeps you as sweet as pie Dreaming through the night Oh, Father Won't you tell me if you know Where does half of the moon go When she's not up in the sky It disappears before my eyes Oh, my soul Why does more
was of course rooftop lullaby and remember as you can see tickets are on sale for my concert in the three arena on the 25th of november 2022 something to look forward to and a nice old christmas present or maybe a halloween present who knows keep hitting the like buttons folks and keep sharing your messages uh hi jack from martina and eamon lyons and mallow we really enjoyed every saturday night show of the lockdown it was a joy every week thank you uh, hello, everyone from Nettie, from Kilkenny, Nettie Brugman. Um, I'll read out some more uh, when I get a chance. Uh, now it's time for my next guest in the studio. Please welcome Irish ballerina supreme, Monica Lockman. Lockman, yes. that's Lockman, it. Yes. yes. Okay. It's not Luke, <laughs> Luke Man. Man. But, uh, not we can, Yeah, it can, be, it can be whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Whatever you want to interpret it to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, as I was ex saying, I was used to hearing it as Luke, man. Yeah. So I, I just changed it to what, where I come from, it's pronounced that way. It was just easier for you. It was just the easier, and yeah. You, and the folk. I, I, I was, yeah. I, 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 was I stuck with it, though. I did. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm still used to <laughs> a lot of my thing. It works for you, what yeah. can I say? There's so many, very, it's very odd it's, it's just, that there's so many variations <laughs> on it. But it, it's kind of geographical, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. So. Yeah, very much so. And those wondering, we are related, uh, second cousins. Yes. Your grandfather and my grandfather were. Yes, indeed. Brothers, yes. Yeah. Um, and how long have we That's known each other? That's where you got all the talent from. from yes. From 
Oh, I know, yeah, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we've known each other a while now. I, 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 what's your first memory of... Okay, so my first memory of you yeah. was my sister brought me along to a concert in the Olympia. I think I just turned 19 and we never got to meet, but she was a massive fan and still is a massive fan. I'm oh. sure she's watching. Hello to her. Um, and she brought me again to another gig and then I was it Vicker Street you, you might have said Vicker Street we first and we, met, yeah. we met face to face yeah, then yeah. so that was many years ago yeah, but you so. haven't changed a bit oh thank you so much <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the uh, you're supposed to compliment technology. me back and you of course haven't aged a bit either <laughs> of course now it's always been music for me uh, what age were you when you were introduced to dance did you know you wanted to be a dancer always I was four when I started ballet, but do you remember actually, I was thinking about this, remember the movie Flashdance? I do. That's when it was, like I know I would have been too, like it was quite a controversial movie, but yeah. like the, the music was so, you know, it just got you going. And like dance doesn't have to be just about ballet. People love to dance in the kitchen and you see people in the car. So I was introduced to it then. And then I went to see Nureyev perform in the Point Theatre. Wow. And then it was Coppelia. Now he was, he was kind of, I don't know how well he was at the time, but I remember watching him and I was just entranced by the whole thing. And that was it. And I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Beautiful. Yeah. There you go. Flash dance. Yeah. So she's a maniac. I love that. Yeah, I yeah, it's that. great. Yeah. Um, and you know the last dance in flash dance is danced by a man dressed as a woman. I know that. That's yes. very cool, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was very impressed by yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's one <laughs> bit of, of trivia. One of the things you learn on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was it hard leaving home to move to Russia? Uh, it wasn't exactly a place you'd go. You know. Yeah, no, it was really hard. So I moved to Russia. I think it was 1992, and I just turned 14. So I had this massive suitcase, which was over 60 kilos in weight, and I wasn't even. I, I wasn't even, I was maybe 45 kilos in weight. So the bag was humongous. Had to trek that onto the train. We were on the train for 22 hours, obviously after our flight to Moscow. And then we got off the train and were met by this group of very handsome young ballet boys, which I didn't mind at all. And then we had to like drag our bags up f five flights of stairs and then start this whole life in another language. Mm. And I wasn't even that good at ballet. Yeah. And the Russians used to like peek over because at the top of our um the door to the ballet class there was a window and they used to peek over and you could hear them laughing at us mm. and so like it was really really difficult to get used to it and it was really and the language is complicated and the food back then really just wasn't very nice i'm sorry i love russian food now it's my favorite food All right. But it, back then it wasn't very good and it was canteen food. And learning to speak the language, did that take long? Yeah, it took, I mean, I, you pick up like language skills that you need, like you need to, to learn how to count. And a lot of ballet is obviously done through um, French. But then, yeah, as I joined the company and I just had to, because all the other Irish people that were over there with me and there was two boys and nine other girls, they'd all left They'd all, some of them had gone to different companies in Russia mm. and I was the only one invited to stay in Perm. I was only 16 and I just had to learn it. Yeah. yeah. I remember being called a spy. I remember like I'm a 16 year old, like I'm a child. Right. And this older lady comes in and like there's adult males and females. They're married, they're children, they've mortgages, they've cars. And I'm being called a spy and oh. I can barely understand what she's trying to say to me. So I figured out I better, I better figure it out fast. Right, yeah. Tell me this, I'm just thinking, you know, when you're, do you, when you're dancing and counting, do you, you obviously get to a point where you're not counting yeah. anymore. You get into flow state where you're not thinking about dancing. Yeah, absolutely. Dancing. Yeah. yeah. And when you get to that point, I remember that the very first point that that happened to me on stage was in Swan Lake on the theater and my body's just moving and even my mind is going, I don't know what I'm doing, mm. but I know this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really, and I didn't even have to listen, and I just finished. And I always had this thing that when I performed, just this other person, mm. you know, or the essence came out, and I just enjoyed it so much. Yeah, yeah. I'm so lucky. Yeah, M music is like that too. Yeah, it's like you're standing in the eye of a storm. Kind of. Yeah, and everything else is happening around you. Yeah. It's you know, when you come off stage, and then you're like, oh, what was and then you run back on, and it's like all the adrenaline and just... I don't know, you get carried away by with the music and with all the audience and with, you know, the person who's just sat up the front going, 
like they, they're just living their best life mm. and then you just connect with them. So, yeah, I mean, I was so lucky to have had that opportunity in my life. Yeah, and it's great to get to that point where you, you know, you're just doing it yeah. instinctively. It's, yeah. Uh, um, and dancing is a tough career. Uh, Very. Just the injuries alone. Would you suggest kids always try to have a backup plan? Yes, particularly, I think, in the arts, in sports, anything where you're doing like creativity. Yes, you should. But you know what? Not everybody does because they're just so driven. Mm. And the thing is, if you're that driven and you're that disciplined and determined, if something happens, you will find within yourself to start something else mm -hmm. with that same kind of caliber and that same kind of approach to a new life. Mm. But yes, I, w I would recommend school at the, s at the same time. Yeah, of course. Fallback plan. Well, yeah. thanks a million. Uh, Monica is staying with me. Uh, so if you have any questions, send them on. Um, there was one lady asking how young maybe uh, you could start dancing or what? Um, a lot of people in Ireland like to send them at the age of four. It's a bit, it's a wee bit too early. It's a bit like child minding to music. So right. keep them at home for a year, a year and a half, dress them up, mm -hmm. encourage them, let them watch stuff on TV and then spend your money when the child can actually touch their toes without falling over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> So yeah, thanks for all the comments. And so uh, next up is one of our final postcards from the edge. And this time we are spotlighting Dublin based Jamal Sul, AKA known as Moving Still. Jamal is an Irish Arabic producer and DJ who has seen COVID from two sides. As a DJ, his live concerts were canceled, but in his day job as an immunologist, he has been busier than ever. So let's take a look at his musical postcards from the edge. My name is Jamal Suleimani and um, I go under Moving Still um, and uh, I'm a producer, a DJ um, that is Irish slash Saudi and yeah, um, I'm also a scientist, um, I'm an immunologist and I work um, with a company called Biosciences. So basically as my day job, I'm a scientist and then at night time, producer, a DJ. I always thought because when I started um, making music that I always had loads of different influences whether it was like disco or house or or hip-hop but I also had another side to it that had Arabic textures as well and I always kind of wanted a name that wouldn't be kind of assigned to any type of genre I just wanted something that was a bit more open and I also had this kind of fascination um, in jellyfish when I was when I was kind of coming up with this name thoughts of a jellyfish is kind of like an oxymoron that it's like it's moving and it's still and I just thought there was a bit of beauty in that, that I could go any direction. It's something that's actually kind of like taken away from us now in general to most artists is that now you're making music from home and you don't really get that connection that you would get on a dance floor to have people respond to you, that kind of emotion, that like unconditional love that you'd get from people just because of hearing this song. And because of the lack of that, the only thing that you have left is to do it on radio. And you can kind of get that feeling that everybody is craving this. They're craving to hear that music and I am quite excited to get that all back. Um, it's always nice to reflect back on you know past times where you're at a gig and all these people are going nuts for a song that you made on your couch downstairs. Because you know, most of the time when I make music, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that I'm doing it in the studio. It could be that I'm super stressed. I don't really want to engage with anybody. I'm just on the couch. And I'll do everything on the laptop. Or at the times if I have the time, I'll, I'll go through the studio equipment as well. And I think the first time that I actually played one of my own songs was in the Sugar Club. Um, and it was Culture Night. And that was the 21st of September, 2018. Um, but the majority of the crowd were kind of Middle Eastern and that was kind of first that gave me a bit of a shock because I was like oh wow um, that's making me even more nervous so it was trying to decide of what to play and my kind of starter song was a was in kind of a, a traditional a Saudi song by a female musician called Iteb and that was actually quite a nice experience um, playing that and then mid set it kind of gave me that push to I want to hear what people think of what I do and actually one of the videos I sent you guys um, is of my song being played for the first time to a crowd. 
Um, but yeah, it was a magnificent experience and I don't think I'll ever forget it, to be honest. When COVID hit, I had just released um, a record that had done incredibly well. I had a gig kind of ready to go to Tunisia, um, Paris, Amsterdam, um, a couple of Belgian gigs and also then I had some contacts that wanted me to play in, in, in Dubai as well and in Saudi and it just all kind of just went bam, gone. So yeah, it was it was a bit difficult because I only had started with my job with Biosciences probably about five months. So I wasn't even past my six month probation. So when the pandemic hit, the first thought that came into my head is like, I'm definitely gonna get let go. And I remember actually my boss ringing me to reassure all of us that look, we're all okay, everything's secure. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it kind of panned out in a sense. And that's why the relationship between my my day-to-day -day work and my music is always kind of back and forth. So you'll always tell that if I'm super stressed with work, that it will it kind of turns itself into like a, a song. And if, if I'm stressed with music, then you know work will be the the my kind of outlet as well. So it's kind of always been back and forth. You know, you had this kind of pressure as an artist to what do I do now that we're in this lockdown? Do I, do I need to make more music? Will I have that creativity? Will the juices flow or... And luckily, they did. And it gave me a significant amount of time to, to listen to stuff that I hadn't listened to. I actually picked this up and I picked it up purely just because of the cover. I ended up listening to this and the majority of the cassette was quite traditional until I heard the last song and I just couldn't believe it. I just said, how have I been sitting on this for like nearly nearly the gist of a year? And then as I was chopping the song, I kind of had this vision of who I wanted to work with. And I contacted a, a pal of mine, Chade, who lives in the Netherlands. And I said, would you like to collab on this song? I think it would be a great combination. So that's pretty much what I used for the majority of the song, is just chopping that small bit. So when you put it together with drums, your own drums and, and your own bass of what the artist probably intentionally wanted to do. So I basically chopped it up, I sent him the project file, he was able to see exactly what I see and it just made it that um, tiny bit more fun. And we finished the song in the space of a week. It was just like chop, 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 put the drums, put the bass, and it was pretty much finished. Then All City Records in Dublin was happy to kind of put it out and build it in terms of the record, and then sent it to record industry in, in the Netherlands, and pretty much it reached number one on Rush Hour's charts. And I couldn't believe it, it was just that it was that whole, it was like this, that I had used the pandemic in this kind of, that was so negative and transformed it into this like positive energy just to, make this song. It's a god awful small affair Do the go with the mouse here What a mommy is yet no And a daddy has told it to go but a friend is nowhere to be seen Now she walks to her sunken dream To a seat with the clearest view And she's hooked on the silver screen But the film is a saddening bore Oh, she's lived it ten times or more She could spit in the eye of fool as they ask you to fall is on sailors fighting in the dance hall. Oh man, look at those cavemen go. It's the freakiest show. Take a look at the man beating up the wrong guy. Oh man, wonder if he'll ever know. He's in the Best-selling show is the life on Mars.
It's on America's tortured brow That Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow Now the workers have struck for fame As Lennon's on sale again See the mice in their million holes From Ibiza to Norfolk Rose Rule Britannia is out of bounds To my mother, my dog and clowns But the film is a saddening bore Cause I wrote it ten times or more It's about to be written as I ask you to focus on sailors fighting in the dance hall. Oh man, look at those cavemen go. It's the freakiest show. Take a look at the low. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, some comments here. Monica, Monica, clear, Monica clearly has so much passion for dance and great commitment. Well done. She really keeps dancing. Keep dancing is a song of mine. Amory McGregor, thanks for that. Amazing interview, Monica. Great insight into the artist, such a vocation. Gillian Dunlop. Thank you. This is really whetting my appetite for the Spiegel tent. I definitely can't wait. Oh, yes, I'm in the Spiegel tent next week in Wexford. Uh, Valerie Doyle, see you there, Valerie. Congratulations on the serious, beautiful music and lovely snapshots of all the people and organizations whose resilience and positivity have prevailed in these strange times. Sheila O'Connell. Thanks so much. Um, what, where am I now? Uh, just in case you join us, I'm chatting with Irish ballet dancer, teacher, writer, cuz, cuz. and television person. Lockman. Monica. <laughs> Luke Man. <laughs> Well, Monica, tell us about the ballet school. Have you always enjoyed working with young people? I do, and I have. Mm -hmm. um, they're both very different. So the young children, I mean, that's very energetic and it's very, you know, it's, it's fun. But with the teenagers, you have to have a lot of authority. You have to know what you're talking about. And remember that this is their, their future. This is their career. This is how, how they're going to pay for their, their electricity and their food. So I take it very extremely, ex extremely serious. And I've like people, I've right now I've four dancers over in Russia. I've one girl over in Belgium. So they, my dancers do leave, but some of them I try to get directly into ballet companies so they don't have right. to train any further. And you can, you can maybe see some people just have a natural. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But I think if someone has a lot of determination, like I work with some people that are naturally, you know, just it, it flows easier. But quite often they're not always the most disciplined ones because mm -hmm. they don't have to work so hard. So I always keep my eye out for those that might, may be struggling. And like, I know how to help them. That's my job. Mm -hmm. You really, you come to me and you say, you want to be a ballet dancer. Jack, I'll say, OK, let's have a look at you. Let's see what you can do. A bit late, but yeah. You never know. I'm just saying. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's my job. I'll say yeah. yay or nay. Mm -hmm. But if I take you, if I, if I work with you on my own, if I take you into my class, you've got it really good. And you've uh, got to be chance. tough. You've got to be straight up with people. kind of. Yeah, I am yeah. very straight up with people. Yeah. I'd be just like, look, you know, it's a really lovely hobby to have. Mm. But this is like the arts in any art. It, don't pursue it lightly. Not unless you think you're going to, you know, get a job at the end of it. Yeah, so you're, are you telling me that my dance career is... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't <laughs> seen you yet. You haven't seen me do it. 
that's next. Uh, so you've done some TV shows. Uh, have, yeah. Do you enjoy that side of things? I do, yeah, yeah. I love working on TV. It's long days. Again, a lot of focus. You have to keep your energy up. Um, what I used to struggle with the most was like just trying to constantly find something to eat because I'd be teaching class and then you'd be doing a lot of talking as well. There's a lot of psychology behind it. But if you give me, if you give me a challenge and you say, Monica, can you turn this person and make them look like a dancer in a certain amount of time, mm. I will accept that challenge. What was that one you were on Channel 4 on a show? Was it, it was Big Ballet, oh. yeah. It was for larger people. Mm -hmm. And I taught them how to do ballet. Some of them had done ballet when they were a child, ch like quite young. Mm. And there, a lot of them were in their late 20s, early 40s. And we had three, three boys and we just, we produced Swan Lake. It was yeah. brilliant. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. And had a really good like following as well. And I think they were, they were going to make a movie about it or something in America. I don't know. I was too busy doing my own thing here. And uh, through COVID, uh, did you have to pivot and work online? Could you teach online? I didn't do anything online. All I did was actually I rebranded the school. I built a new website because I found out my old website w wasn't working. I, re I, didn't, I won't say I retrained myself, but I trained myself to slow down as a teacher. Because you can tell I can be very fast, yes. So, mm -hmm. so you have to slow down, and you have to be very clear, and you have to be able to get your point across very quickly. Mm. And But everyone is different. There could be 15 or 20 people in the class, and you have to spot it. They're, you know, they all deserve to be you know, lifted up and, and, and worked. I try my very best with every child. Like I leave my ballet class when I teach, and I am sweating. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not dancing on the stage any, anymore, but I'm still dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, and did you have to learn how to use a lot of the tech yourself or did you get somebody else? <laughs> so I got somebody else oh, okay. to do that. Well, we all learned a little bit. We all <laughs> had to, to learn a I bit. I painted walls, okay? I painted the studio. I'm more a manual person. Right, right. There you go. P painting was very therapeutic. Yes, it was. And if you never became a ballerina or there other forms of dance you would have liked to pursue, or would you have picked a totally different career? Okay, so if I had to be in dance, it probably would have been ballroom dancing. Oh. But if I had to be in another career, maybe a vet, maybe. Right. But that's really it. Maybe a nun for a little while. Maybe a nun, vet, ballroom dancer. Uh, and would ballroom dancing be your favourite outside of, of uh, doom? <laughs> I, re I really can't ballroom dance because I lead. Right. I lead, I'm too... Yes. As you can tell. The lady leads in ba ballet, yeah. Well, the lady, we dictate where, because he's usually standing behind us waiting for us to do something, mm. or we're throwing ourselves at him. So he takes the lead from us. Does the lady ever lead in ballroom dancing? I don't know. There must be something. Maybe they do. Yeah. I'll have to, we'll have to Google that. I was not the better dancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's why I used to lead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what's next for you? Any new shows, projects? Yeah, ideas? I'm working on a new show. So it'll be for December 2022, when I know everything has calmed down. Mm. So I'm going to do a couple of Nutcrackers. I'm going to tour Ireland. I'm already in discussions with like different sponsors for it. So, yeah, and I'm just going to rebuild my school, get it up off the floor and, you know, start again, like most business people have to at these times, you know, yeah. and it's business and it's art. So it's particularly difficult. Difficult, yeah. But I can do it. You can, of course. And, and where can people find you online? What's the website? Is it? Um, ballerina.ie. And we, we'll be selling like the tickets for the Nutcracker very soon, even, even though it is December 2022. Right, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. This has been great. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks great, for having me. Great to have you on. Yeah, and thanks a million to Monica for joining me tonight. Now, uh, great to catch up. Um, I wish you all the best. And uh, well, we're going to take a look at a short video I filmed when I caught up with Lucas and King in France recently. Well, I'm here with Lucas and King, the dynamic duo from the UK who've been holed up in Normandy in France for the whole of the pandemic. So I'm just wondering, how did you remain creative? Because you've managed to release a single and you've managed to make new music and boy, you've managed to do a lot of painting. So is, did you find it hard to keep going through the pandemic? So I did a music production course in the middle of it last year. So that was a good way of kind of immersing myself in something, basically painting a lot 
So I don't know, I feel like it's been a really good time to learn. It, it felt like for me a really good time to like dive into things I maybe didn't give myself the time to do before. I hadn't, I hadn't really painted in a really long time. And um, yeah, I just started one day and then I got kind of obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I used, to, I used to just kind of do paintings for people's birthdays and stuff like that, but um, I never used, I, I've never done abstract before. And you've been selling a lot of them as well, they've been going well. Yeah, 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 yeah. great. As well as moving to a new country, we didn't know anyone here and we can't speak French very well. And the ability to kind of learn how to do that was really minimal um and yeah just how much you could differentiate the day because we're in the countryside and we can't go far we were lucky because there were so many ways i think you know when we first locked down like you're just surrounded by nature and space and like, i was just like oh, we're so lucky we're not um you know in an apartment like quite a lot of people that were and do you feel that the pandemic has changed the music business i still think people well, look, people always want live music, but I, I kind of felt, well, we both felt that there was a slight decline anyway because of the immediacy mm. that you can access everything online. I kind of felt like, especially with like the slightly younger generation, um, don't seem to be that involved like like live music as much. Anyway, so we kind of felt like it was like we know a few venues that shut down in like Southampton mm -hmm. were there and stuff before the pandemic. So I think it was kind of on a decline. Where can we find your well, wonderful paintings that we see in the background here, Bo? Uh, so mainly on my Instagram, which is just Bo Lucas Art. Brilliant. Because I, I don't have a website yet, but I do sell on teaspoon. Thanks a million guys. Inside myself I see my heart is black I see a red door and I want to paint it black
been handed these that was of course painted black uh, now it's the time to see what you've been saying tonight let's have a look at some of your messages I'd love to have the fitness of a ballet dancer impressive strength unfortunately I have the fitness of a bus driver and that's Thomas Quinn Thomas thanks for all your and I, I saw on your comments where you said it was great during COVID that you got to talk to everybody on the bus and got to know everybody better and I'll see you soon I'm on tour in the UK in November. I hope to see you there, Thomas, and see everybody else too. And you can check out the dates online. Really enjoyed it tonight. We can't wait to be able to come to a gig in person. Neil and Val near Sheffield. As I said, I'll be in the UK, so I might see you there. It would be very interesting watching Jack ballet dance Mary Kate Golden. It would indeed. It would indeed, but who knows, who knows. So, my, so much diversity and inclusion in the show, How Life Should Be. You're too right, Gillian Dunlop. Well said. Love Derek's ponytail, Netta Brugman. I'm sure Derek would be delighted to hear that. Uh, maybe old-fashioned to say, but Jack's diction is so good, you get every word. Good Lord, my, my teachers in school would be delighted to hear you say that. They would never believe you. Gillian Dunlop. So uh, <clears throat> that's it, folks. Once again, it's been another fantastic show tonight. And thank you all again for watching me in this series. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Sadly, tonight is the last episode, but I'll be back online soon. I'd like to thank everybody here, Mark and Sharon, and everybody at other, another avenue um, for helping us put this all together. Um, so many people involved. I put some pictures up online. You can see everybody. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll see you all soon out on the road. But of course, there is the concert in the Three Arena in 2022. So, uh, Please share the word about that. And as I said, I'll be touring in the UK in November. In the meantime, good night. Stay safe and look after each other. And please share this with other people. And share the music and share all the different people that we've had on the show and all the great associations. And uh, uh, spread the word about all these great things. I'm going to leave you with a montage of some of the best of the postcards we received. And I'm going to get ready to sing the last two songs here in Stradbury and uh, this is a Nirvana and the Doors classic thank you everybody thanks to everybody here help me do this all the musicians I can't thank everybody enough and thanks to you for tuning in see you all soon
Load up on guns. Bring your friends. It's fun to lose and to pretend. She's overboard, self-assured. Oh no, I know a dirty word. Hello, hello, hello. Oh no, hello, hello, hello. Oh no, hello, hello, hello. Oh no, hello, hello. With the lights out, it's less dangerous. And I forget why I dance, so oh, yeah, I guess it makes me smile. I found it hard, it's hard to find the will. It's less dangerous Here we are now Entertain us I feel stupid And contagious Here we are now Entertain us A mulatto An albino A mosquito It's dangerous. Here we are now. Entertain us. I feel stupid and contagious. Here we are now. Entertain us. Oh, denial. Oh, denial. Oh, denial. Oh, denial. A denial, 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 a Show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. Show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. For if we don't find the next whiskey bar, I tell you we must die. I tell you we must die. I tell you. I tell ya, I tell ya, we must die. Oh, moon, have I We now must say goodbye. We've lost our good old mama. 
Just that whiskey way in the wild Oh, moon of Alabama We now must say goodbye Say goodbye. We lost our good old mama and must have whiskey. Well, you know what? Thank you.